underestimate what can ha what can happen, but we actually underestimate what can happen in 10 years. And what do I mean by that? So if you set your goals, um, many times we sh overshoot with what we can actually accomplish in a year because transformation takes time. Um, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time. And we don't, um, sometimes we don't think about what uh, failure um, plays into, you know, part of our transformation. So it takes time, but we underestimate what, what can happen in 10 years. And I was just thinking about this this morning um, is how far uh, one person can come in 10 years. Now, if I think about my life, if I think about 10 years ago, um, where were you 10 years ago? I mean, 2014, can you even remember? If you're watching live, say hi to me in the comments. If you are watching um, on the replay, say hashtag replay. Um, drop it in the comments below. Where were you 2014? Can you remember? And, and have you experienced any kind of transformation? And just tell us in the comments, you know, what kind of transformation did you go through in the last 10 years? Because for me, um, 2014, I was 29 years old. Uh, my oldest daughter was eight years old. My little one was two years old. Um, and it was the year before I fell pregnant with my third daughter. So um, my step kids were 14, 15 and 18. Um, and at the time I was working at Walton's stationery as a branch administrator in Whitbank. So, um, yeah, if I think back uh, on that time in my life, uh, my priorities were simply just surviving and getting through the day because I had a pretty hectic life. Um, the year before that, I had to quit my BCon degree because um, because of my print baby. So the uh, Lumay, my second child, was born premature. Um, I had help syndrome with her pregnancy. So um, she was born, I think, at 34 weeks. And she was tiny. She was 1.8 kilograms when she was born. Um, and it was just hard work to get that little... Um, that little bird to uh, grow up. So um, love was hectic. So I had to quit my BCom degree to look after her. And I also at the time, just before uh, Walton's, I was working at Hyundai um, and we worked crazy hours, like sometimes 11, 12, 1, 2 in the mornings. And I was a creditors um, at, at Hyundai, but, you know, it was just a crazy department to work for and we had so much work and they didn't have a budget to hire more people so it was just really crazy I just want to yeah um and I just I, I had to work so many hours and it was it was nerve-wracking and um there just came a point where I just decided I'm going to quit um my degree because it was just dealing with a small baby dealing with this super hectic job was just too much for me um so at walton's um at least when i was a bit older but um i can't really remember but i think that year my uh, two of my step kids still lived with us um and even though they helped and we had a full-time domestic worker um it was just pretty much hectic i woke up in the mornings got ready for work kissed the kids goodbye um you know, on their way to school and then just worked until late and then came home with like a whole moribund full of um, work stuff and then I needed to work and then after work I needed to study and then, you know, if there was any time left, I could spend time with my family. Um, it was just super terrible. Um, yeah, it was just not a nice way of working in corporate with all these children and with trying to study and getting, you know, ahead and getting better. So, um, yeah, literally my priorities was just surviving and the budget was really tight. There was no way for me to just quit my job. Um, um, at that time, my husband and I started getting marital problems. Um, I was just, I was very lonely and I was overworked, totally overworked. And then we got an opportunity to move away uh, a little bit further uh, where my dad stayed and... Um, we made the decision to go there and just as we moved, 
my core broke down so I wasn't able to work any further and I had to quit my corporate job so um, then I felt pregnant and my husband started his own business he also quit his jobs uh, thinking that he was gonna you know do well in the business and the business was just <laughs> the business flopped so um, financially we were in dire straits I just had the third baby um, our marriage fell apart physically um, I was a mess I was morbidly obese it was just a very bad time in my life and um, in 2016 um, I actually just wanted to end it all I, I was done I was so depressed um, I had long hair down my back and I cut it off with a clipper because I didn't want to get out of bed I, I, I had I think I had major, major depression and um, yeah and, and in 2016 or 2017 my husband and I actually um, broke up and I moved away to, to the Northern Cape so I moved like eight and a half hours away and I would just remember sitting in that flat with my three daughters and they were still so little I didn't have a car I had to walk my kids to school I think it was two or three kilometers you know, there and back. And if you know the Northern Cape, it gets so hot in the summer. And I wasn't used to it because I come from Gauteng. So the scorching sun used to burn down on me on the road. And me with my little pram, taking the kids to school every morning and fetching them every evening. And then having to walk again to go and fetch something to buy to eat, you know, to go make something for dinner. And I was just remembering being really exhausted and that is the time that I actually started my business because that's when I went through a physical transformation um, lost I think it was 22 kgs or 27 kgs at the time um, lost a lot of weight but still I was really uh, I didn't have energy and I was mentally very broken down um, luckily um, we were able to reconcile my husband and I so I moved back home but mentally I was still not at a, at a stage where I was really um, stable so um, with this physical transformation that's where my co coaching started because I had this physical transformation also helped my husband lose weight also helped my daughter uh, my stepdaughter lose weight and um, together I think we lost like uh, um, 100 kilograms which is like I don't know 300 pounds or I don't know how many pounds it is um, but we lost a lot of, a lot of weight together and um, people wanted to also, you know, do what we were doing. So I started studying personal training and, and um, nutrition um, so that I could actually help those people. So that's where my coaching started. But I soon realized that this um, journey was much more than a physical transformation. It had to be mental because I realized that I sabotaged myself so much. Um, and that's where I started to do the life coaching and I started to look into cognitive behavioral therapy because there was a point where I said, why do I on a Monday start with a diet just to fail by Wednesday? What happens in between what you want to do and, and the actions that you actually take and how, why do we sabotage ourselves that much? So I did a whole course on cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and, and I think that is where my mental transformation happened. And I moved more into um, mental, you know, mindset coaching and, 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 you know, really just healed myself from a mental perspective. And also throughout this whole journey, I think um, I really also had a spiritual transformation because in 2016, the only thing that was left when I was so depressed was my rock at the bottom was was Jesus because I had nothing left there was nothing to hold on to except for him so I think that's where I really just got serious about my relationship with God and um, I, I think in 2019 I think it was about 2019 yes then we joined a Pentecostal church so I grew up in um, um, I think it's called Reformed Church so uh, my, my grand father was a preacher in the reformed church and my mom was you know a preacher's child so um, I grew up in that church so I never really um, experienced uh, the work of the Holy Spirit um, so I went to a Pentecostal church one day um, I was invited and I had such an experience 
with the Holy Spirit, so much so that I was crying my eyes out and um, couldn't stop crying. And um, it really just sparked this whole journey of learning about the Holy Spirit and the the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, I We moved to the Northern Cape, I think it was in 2020. Yeah, moved to the Northern Cape. We met some awesome people who we started a little house church with. And um, the house church just grew and grew and grew. And um, I finally got baptized as an adult there. Um, and, and um, you know, my spiritual transformation is 180 degrees from, from there, you know. And, and then I started studying Christian counseling. So I started with lay Christian counseling just to um, understand myself, understand others, help others. Because I had a lot of people with their mental transformations coming in being uh, suicidal being depressed and stuff like that and i i didn't know how to deal with that so the um you know the, the christian counseling and stuff um i never finished that but i did about five um subjects of the lay christian counseling and i'm so grateful for that because now i know what the boundaries are you know who you can help who, when you need to refer things like that and it just helps me to be that first line of defense when I need to work with my people and I have a um, um, a case where I can't help them then I know to refer and things like that so um, and I think that is throughout my business and through the um, personal coaching or, or the the physical transformations and the mental transformations that I help people with I soon realized that most of my knowledge and most of my skills lie in the financial side because I come from eight years as bookkeeper because I had that background um, and because I was so hard so working so hard to make my business work um, online so studying social media stu studying online marketing and sales um, that I followed a lot of coaches and did a lot of courses on selling your expertise online because that's what I was trying to do at the time and I realized um, that this is actually where most of my skill lie in is helping other people and myself to really create a sideline or a side hustle on, on um, social media. So um, my speciality is in Facebook. So um, I've worked on Facebook for many years now. Um, I think I'm eight years on Facebook as a coach. So um, yeah, that, that started my financial transformation and uh, a bit about being a bit more independent and, a, um, you know, a bit more about freedom, you know, time, location, money, freedom, things like that. So, um, yeah, so life now looks like I am a homeschool mom. I stay at home with my kids. I run my own business from home. Um, I absolutely love and love what, what I do with the women that I work with. So I work with Christian female entrepreneurs. I help them to find their voice, find their tribe online. I help them to sell their expertise on Facebook. I help them to earn their first 5K online. Um, and and I do what I love. You know, I, I love doing it. So um, that's a physical or the financial transformation. Um, mm. And I think the Lord has been busy with me since uh, meeting that family in the Northern Cape around relationships because i think in my life i had a lot of broken relationships um um and i think the lord has just really been um healing me and coming to restore pieces in my life um that has to do with relationship because i come from all this brokenness and the lord has shown me you know the value of relationship side janine um the value of just getting to know people and loving people um, and loving broken people for that matter. I mean, it's easy to love someone and every, anybody can love someone when they are, um, when they're easy to love, but how do you love broken people? So I think, um, I've just been on a journey of loving broken people because I'm a broken person myself. You know, Jesus loves me. So yeah, loving broken people. Um, I think, um, in these 10 years, self image, um, changed a lot because the, the way I saw myself at, in my corporate career was very different from how I saw myself when I was a housewife. I, um, you know, 10 years ago or eight years ago when I resigned from my corporate career, I felt useless. I felt like, 
You know, if I'm not a bookkeeper now, what am I now? I'm nothing. I'm just a housewife. And um, with my business, that changed again. So when I published my book, when I published my six-month course, my 12-month course, t taking my students through that, that raised my self-confidence again and in my ability to succeed. You know, just trusting in the Lord and trusting in myself that um, what I'm creating um, is worthwhile and it is something that's substantial and just feeling really proud of myself for what I've accomplished. Um, thinking about <clears throat> things like personal branding, I mean, if I look back on the time that I was a housewife in 2016, 2018, you know, there, I really felt, I mean, coming from corporate, you know, dressing up every day, being ready for work, all those things, and then just having this time where you're just at home, where your income is low, where you don't feel like dressing up, you don't feel like putting on makeup, um, just really feeling very sorry for yourself, actually, not wanting anybody to come visit you, things like that. And just coming back from that and now having my coaching business where I do need to dress up, I need, need to put it on my face, I need to speak to people online, I need to have Zoom meetings most of the days of the week. Um, and just getting back that routine of just taking care of myself, taking care of my environment, taking care of the things that needs to be done. Um, and then life design is just really sitting and thinking of uh, where are you now in your life and where do you want to go? I mean, if, if you take an aeroplane, um, it only takes like a few millimeters of change of the nose of the airplane to change the trajectory of that plane of where it's going to end up. So the same with us is where are you going? You know, if you look at 10 years ago, you mean, uh, you know, where were you 10 years ago and who are you today? What's that transformation? How long has it taken you? And where is the next 10 years taking you? Where are you going with it? All right. What is the Lord calling you to do? What is your giftings? Do you even know? Um, are you daily using your giftings to work in the kingdom or what are you doing with your life? Where are you going? Okay. So. Yeah, if I look at, look at all of these things, um, I had a lot of lessons that I learned. And I think that is what the book that I've written um, that became a bestseller in 2022 on Amazon is all about. is all these lessons that I've had to learn along that process. Uh, stuff like learning to find myself again because I felt very lost after my corporate career. Just trying to find my identity again in who I was and... Um, it was hard for me to to really find myself again because I had this identity crisis. And then moving from this victim mentality of everything is happening to me to saying, OK, no, um, I need to change my thinking into, you know, taking responsibility for things that are happening in my life. Not just saying, oh, poor me, you know, my husband and poor me, my circumstances and poor me, my financial situation. But taking control and saying that God has given me a sound mind and um, autonomy, and I can choose to be better. You know, I saw a quote that says, um, or, or I, my sister-in-law had a, had a um, talk with me, and she said, you are not a tree. If you don't like where you're at, move. And that just clicked for me. I, yeah, I really decided to make, the, you know, just change that around, not just um, blaming everybody. And, and, shifting my perspective from being a taker to becoming a giver. Um, my husband always used to say to me 10 years ago, you always see the glass half empty. And it was like that. I was a very ungrateful person. Everything was always happening to me. I was always very negative. And I, and I started a gratitude journal, writing in my gratitude journal every morning, saying to myself, what are three things that I can be grateful for today, in the morning and in the evenings? And that switched it for me. After I've finished written this gratitude journal um, and I've written it full of things, then I started seeing that I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. There's many things in my life that I could be grateful for. And it started changing for me uh, when I started seeing it that way. So um, through this whole journey and through your life journey as well, you will develop a toolbox of success. So what are the things that you had to go through in these 10 years that actually is going to help you further in the future and not only yourself, 
but what is it equipping you to heal in someone else's life? So uh, think about the olive. You know, an olive needs to be crushed for that oil to come out. So that oil, that crushing, is your anointing. So the things you go through in your life, the things you need to experience, the things that hurt you, those are the things that give you that special tools and techniques that is going to help you in the future and help other people out of their mess because you can relate to them when they are going through it and you can tell them what were the things, what were the steps you took to get out of that hole. So the Lord uses that crushing um, and it, it, is that, um, it is that precious oil that was broken over Jesus' feet that was worth a year's labor. So your oil, it is precious and it can help somebody, it can heal somebody. And God puts you through things so that you can become that oil, become that healing for the kingdom. So use your unique toolbox. So things that I had to learn. Oh my goodness, I had to learn so many things. Um, you know, unique capabilities and surviving skills throughout this journey of mine. Um, I learned about neuro associations. You know, what do you associate with? And you need to unassociate with, with your past and, and your old self. And you need to associate with your new self. You need to really attach to what you want rather than what's been happening in your life. Because otherwise you're just going to have more of the same. You need to change that neuro associations in your life. Um, and if your past is something that is still present, that still haunts you, that still keeps you, uh, you know, holds you back then um, there's some work to be done. You need to do some journaling. You need to um, really pray about it, really just reflect on it and move from the past position into the now and say that the past is past. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change that. But we can choose who we, who we decide to become in the future and who we are now. We can make a decision that I don't like who I am today and I'm changing that today. And you can be someone else the very next moment. So it takes a decision. We are always one decision away from having a totally different life. Okay. So um, another thing is not knowing what is your why. What is your why for doing things? If you don't have a vision, the Bible says, um, my people perish because of a lack of vision. So if you don't have a vision, and if I say vision, I think about what is your three-year vision? What do you want three years from now? Um, if you don't know what that vision is for your life, then you won't have that why. Why are you doing things? What do you want to have? Why are you doing what you're doing? Okay, and what? What do you need to be doing? So a vision will stay this, or a dream will stay a dream and it will die on your pillow. If you don't turn it into a vision, you take that vision, you turn it into a plan, and that plan needs to have executable steps that you need to take. And if you don't take action, guess what? Your dream will still stay a dream. Okay. You need to figure out the what. You need to figure out the how, and you need to actually take action on it. And then you need to look at sabotage. So sabotage comes from a few different um Places. It comes from self-sabotage where I, I become my own best enemy. Um, I speak death over my life. Um, I don't believe the promises of God. Um, I don't take action on the things I should be taking. Sabotage can also come from other people where you have people in your life that are toxic, that are holding you back, that, are, that keeps telling you you can't do it, you won't be able to do it. Um, so look at who is my circle. Who are my people? Are they rowing in your boat or are they drilling holes in the boat? Okay. <laughs> okay. Then we can also look at things like habits, attitudes, and activities. What habits do you have in your life that is drilling holes in your boat? What activities helps you to row forward? What attitudes are you showing up with in your work, in your play, in your relationships? That is drilling holes. And which ones are the ones that help you row forward? Okay. Um, and then fighting for your dreams. So if you have that vision, um, not letting anybody 
come in between that telling you that you can't do it or it's not possible um you know philippians 4 13 says we are, we can do all things through christ who strengthens us so really just believing that um, the promises that God's spoken over us and the calling that we have in our life, if God has given you a vision and a dream um, and this plan, then trust in the Lord that he will make it happen. And if you say to me, Yona, but I don't know what the dream is, I, d I don't have a dream, then I would encourage you to really spend time with the Lord. Because he will give you plans. He will give you bl blueprints. Go and read Judges 6 and 7. Where Gideon, um, they were, for seven years, the Midianites came and stole the harvest. And they didn't have plans and they tried everything, but it was just not working. And they were trying to, they were getting um, discouraged. And then Gideon just prayed to the Lord. And the Lord gave him a supernatural strategy. And it didn't make sense in the physical. They had to go in at night and they had to make a loud sound a loud noise in the camp of the enemy. And you know what? That loud noise that they made confused the enemy so much that they killed each other. They killed themselves. Okay, so ask the Lord to give you supernatural strategy for the plans that he lays on your heart. And spend time with the Lord. Go up higher with him. This is the year of the open door. This is the year where the Lord is giving us plans and strategies to um, further his kingdom so um, spend time with the Lord so he can give you those plans and so he can give you that battle plan and that battle strategies, um, you know, to move forward. Um, then looking at a fear of failure. If you're scared to start something, you know, the man on the mountain didn't fall there. He had to go there and failure is just, it is on the way to success. If you're not willing to fail, fail, you're not willing to succeed. You need to be willing to fail because there's, you're going to fail many times. Mastery takes 10,000 hours. You know, in the book of Mastery by Robert Greene, he talks about 20,000 hours, which is an intuitive feel where you do things automatically. Think about geniuses like Elon Musk and Mozart. You know, you need to get to, to a level of mastery and, and you will fail. Thomas Edison, 10,000 times before he uh, figured out the light bulb. You need to be willing to fail. Um, and then maybe you are doing it alone. Maybe you are winging it alone. And let me tell you, it's a lonely road. It's a hard road. It's a long road when you want to do it alone. Rather, get yourself into a community of women or people who are willing to support you, who are on the same road as you. Like if you are a Christian female entrepreneur, join the Unstoppable Faithpreneur tribe. I share a lot of um, insight there, a lot of trainings. Um, and we take ants. We do things together. You know, I've got a group of women. Um, you know, they are my praying clients. But I mean, um, we all build our businesses together. And we can laugh together and we can cry together and we pray together. And we do strategy together, you know, we, uh, we look at each other's blind spots and we give it each other some ideas and plans and stuff. Because doing it alone is just too hard. <laughs> it's too hard. Okay. We have to align our life to God's will. So if you look at 1 Corinthians 2, um, it says that the only person who can discern the will of God is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit... Um, discerns the mind, the heart, and the will of God. And he aligns us to the will of the Father, the, the heart and the, the mind of the Father. So we need to connect with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please align us so that our plans are your plans and our thoughts are your thoughts and our heart, our emotions are your heart and your emotions for your people. Right, we have to surrender. If you're disconnected, if you're feeling like you're far from God right now, I want to just just say, um, you want to pray for me in the comments below. Because then I want to do a prayer for you. Um, and I want to tell you that your father loves you. And you can come back at any time. You know, the prodigal son, when he went away, when he came back, his father didn't scold him and ridicule him. His father ran to him with open arms. And our father is like that. He's running. 
towards you with open arms. He wants you to come back. He wants to heal you. He wants to love on you. He wants to slaughter that calf for you. Don't stay away. Don't let the enemy convince you that you're alone. Don't let the enemy convince you that you're not loved, that you're not worthy of love. Because the Father sent His Son to die for you. That's how much He loves you. All right. Just see. Oh, I think my battery is going to die. Oh, great stuff. Okay, we will do a part two of this live, okay? I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching, Janine. Bye.